Good morning. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. Um, today, I'm gonna teach you how to switch your camera over to manual mode so you can stop fiddling with it and then take some pictures like this. Here, let me give you a tour. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Today we are gonna learn how to use manual mode in about five minutes. Look, when I first picked up a camera, the most intimidating thing for me were all these buttons. I just wanted to go out and shoot and take freaking nice pictures. And instead, I was fiddling around with my camera setting. You know, that's really fun too in its own way, but a lot of people just wanna avoid all that and just take really nice pictures from the get-go. So I shoot Canon, but all these settings apply to pretty much any phone, mirrorless, DSLR nowadays, as long as you understand this holy trinity of camera settings, then you'll at least be able to establish your foundation for using your camera in manual mode. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is ISO. So ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. You always wanna keep it at around 100, the lowest the better because the more ISO you introduce, then the more noise you also introduce into your picture. Now on top of that, the higher the range of ISO you go, then the brighter your picture will be. Now depending on your camera, some cameras are able to push your ISO way further than other cameras before they start introducing noise. For the ADD, for instance, I never go any higher than 800 ISO because after that, it just looks disgusting. But then on the 1DX, which I'm shooting right now, I can push that to way, way higher amounts for ISO. But bottom line though, you wanna keep your ISO at the lowest possible setting. Now, a lot of the times when you're picking up a mirrorless or a DSLR camera, a lot of professional pictures, they have a nice blurred background and that blurred background is called bokeh. Now, the one setting that is pretty much responsible for that is called the f-stop. So you have ISO, which is adjusting your camera sensitivity to light. The second setting that we'll talk about is f-stop. So the lower your f-stop is, then the more light you're letting in because you're opening your lens up. And on top of that, the blurrier your background will be. So a lot of times when people are talking about your lenses and they're talking like about how fast it is, if they're saying a lens is fast, that means that it probably has a lower f-stop and also means that it's way more expensive than the other lenses because 1.2, 1.4 lenses, those usually go for a lot more than 2.4, 2.8 and so forth. But remember, you don't want to abuse this blurry background image. For example, let's say I'm doing landscape photography and you have this nice mountain range and a giant boulder in front of you. Do you want to take a picture of the boulder? with the blurred background of the mountain range, or do you want a nice, clear picture of the mountain range? Probably the mountains, right? So in cases like that, that's when you want everything in focus or like for family photos, all of that I would recommend you use like f-stop of f5 or higher. Okay, so let's combine those two settings and understand them together. Right now, the lens that I'm shooting at is at a f2.0, which means that the ISO, I don't have to adjust too much because it's letting in a ton of light already from two studio lights here. If I were to crank that to like f5, f7, the room is gonna get way darker, and then I'm probably gonna to have to compensate for that by adjusting ISO to make it brighter or else you won't be able to see anything at all. So ISO, artificial in-body lighting, f-stop, how much light you're letting in. The third and final setting I want you to understand is shutter speed. Let's say you wanna take pictures of your dog. How often are they gonna sit still? Probably not, right? So here you wanna freeze your motion in place and to do that, that's when shutter speed comes into play. Shutter speed is that click that you have for your camera. It's pretty much dictating how long you're gonna let light hit your camera sensor. So that means that the higher your shutter speed and the faster you can freeze motion. The slower your shutter speed, then the longer it's going to remain open. So the higher your shutter speed, the less light you're letting come in and therefore your picture's gonna turn out darker, but in exchange, your motion's gonna be frozen in place. Okay, so let's combine all three settings as an example. I'm in front of a beautiful waterfall, what I wanna do first. For me, I always adjust f-stop first because I think about what is my subject in focus. In this case, it's the giant waterfall, so you don't want a low f-stop for that, you want a high f-stop. So landscape photography, you don't really want anything blurry, high f-stop. Now in exchange, when you are cranking up your f-stop, your picture gets darker. How would you fix that? You wanna keep ISO at one to 100, if we can. It's midday, so there's a ton of light coming in, which means we can now play with the shutter speed. But since I want a nice, flowy, smooth motion of the water, I wanna move my shutter speed to like 15 seconds. I want it to remain open for a long time, that way you get a nice long streak of water. So high up stop, it's dark. Slow shutter speed, it gets brighter, and therefore I can leave ISO at about 100, and then boom, we get a nice smooth waterfall picture. I also use the ND filter on um, my lens here, just in case, so I can keep the camera settings um, a little bit darker, but more on that on the next video. But I'm gonna talk about specific camera gear 
or specific essentials of camera gear in another video. So more on that later. Okay, let's try another example. I'm outside midday and I want to take a picture of a miniature from Lords of Hellas, so product photography. Okay, I want a nice blurred background, but I don't want the background to take away from my main subject, which is the miniature. So I have a small subject, blurred background. What would you do first? F-stop, right? So you're going to crank your F-stop down. Now we have a nice blurred, delicious background. Okay, but the thing is you're letting in a ton of light. It's midday, so it's way overexposed. How would you fix that? ISO is already at 100. Okay, the last thing you want to adjust now is shutter speed. So now you can crank your shutter speed a lot. I can even go to like one to 4,000. Um, if I want to, it's not going to take away from anything really. So that's what's nice about photography. You can always compensate with shutter speed um, once you adjust the other two settings because it won't matter as much as it would for video. For video, you would get like these static -y motions and then you would see individual droplets of water if you have a shutter speed that doesn't match your frame rate, but more on that later. Let's focus on the photography aspect here. Okay, so low off stop, subjects in focus, background blurry. ISO is at 100 and then I compensate for shutter speed to make sure it's perfectly exposed and then boom. Example number two complete. Okay, last quick example. One of my favorite types of photos are long exposure photography. Now for that one, let's say I have a miniature, okay? And I want to do some steel wool, so I just want to whisk it around the background and get these nice long streaks of light. Now to do that, we're going to mimic the same thing we did for the waterfall example and keep a slow shutter speed. So we're going to keep it open for 30 seconds. It's pitch black at night, so you can't see anything else anyway. So 1 to 30th is going to give a ton of light coming in. And then for f-stop, I actually like to put my f-stop higher just so you can see complete details of what's going on and keep your camera on a tripod too. And then here I played around with f-stop and ISO just a little bit here and there until I finally got nice streaks of light which were, you know, some were in focus, some were out of focus. But the main focus here, I said focus like five times, but the main subject here is of course the miniature. So I'll make sure like all the details of that can be seen super nice and crispy and then the background just accents what's going on here. Uh, in this case, it's the monument of light so naturally it fits with the whole light streaks in the background. And that is basic camera settings, pretty much how to use manual mode in about five, I'm probably way over that by now, five minutes or so. But I hope you enjoyed how we puzzle pieced the trinity of camera settings. That way we can take nice, beautiful photos. I hope you found it helpful. If you found all this helpful, please hit subscribe so we can grow this channel together in 2020, get it to as big as it can possibly be. I've also linked my social media here if you wanna keep up to date with daily content on what I'm doing. And until next time, See you guys later.